his sons, Jesus, his son is the same age as, well, when I showed it to him. I showed it to him when he was the same age as his father on the show. We watched him and his father, me and his father, and he, he was just blown away by it. I said to him, you think you could do that? He says, I don't know, Grandpa. Because Mark was, you know, I, I look back at it now, and, 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 and you know, I was very um, adamant that he shouldn't uh, act as a child. I just didn't think, I just don't think it's the best thing for kids. And as I look back at that, I wonder, though, because he was so talented. He really was good. I mean, it's unbelievable the way he gets laughs. And it's, and his, you know, his sincerity, his, his, he's living truthfully in imaginary circumstances. It blows my mind. And he's seven or eight years old. Um, so what happened, how this happened was, so he was in love with Danny DeVito. Just couldn't, but the same size, by basically. And he just loved Uncle Danny. So he learned all of Danny's lines. And I was going out with Mary Lou at the time, and we had dinner. And he was sitting with us, it was the three of us. And I says, hey, uh, show Mary Lou what you, do the, do the thing with me. And, uh, and it was the bit about, uh, it was the second, the second show where I, I knocked down the guy, uh, I knocked down the champion, and I get a, a, a fight with a major contender because of, it was called One Punch Banter. And, and in it, Louis comes down the stairs. Uh, once a loser, always a loser. You know, comes down. And, um, and he did this thing called, uh, and, and, and Judd says, I'll bet you. And he says, what are the odds? And she goes, odds? <laughs> you know, he had this little thing. And Mark learned it. Like that. So Mary Lou, the next day we went in to, uh, to the show. And it was, I think it was a Thursday. It was a camera blocking day. So I had everybody there. So Mary Lou says, hey, Jimmy, make Tony show you what Mark does. So everybody was on a break. Everybody was sitting around. So we did it with Mark. Everybody, all the actors, he played Louis. Danny sat out. Everybody else did the scene. And he was unbelievable. It was, and the place was laughing like crazy. So cut to Friday night. We're doing the show, and it never happened before. It hadn't happened before. It was only our second show, but it had never. It never happened again. We lost the light board. The board went out. We were just in the dark almost, you know, except for work lights. So Jimmy's waiting. They're waiting, and they're waiting. He got an audience there, and he he says to me, hey, "Tony, what about making Mark do that thing for the audience?" I said, "Jimmy, I don't, know. I don't think he'll do it for the audience. You know, it's one thing to do it for us." He was sitting up in the booth, so I run upstairs. I go into the booth. I look on their side. I say, hey, "Mark." Would you do that thing? You'd, yeah. <laughs> he didn't even let me get it out. He was out the door. So he goes down, and he does it in front of the audience, and it's hysterical because it really is funny. He's playing Louie, you know. So then I get a call. I get a call uh, that Paramount wants to put him in Bad News Bears. They were doing a show. So I went, and I read with him. Now, again, remember, I don't know anything about this reading stuff. Because I keep getting everything I read for. So I go in with him, and I'm going to read with him. I'm so nervous, I messed the kid up, by the way. He looks at me like, at one point, he was like, come on already. But anyway, it was for Arthur Silver and, jo and, and Bobby Br Bob Bruner. And they were like these big guys. Arthur Silver has this, this dark, you know, even when he shaves, it's like dark, you know. And uh, when we finished, they said, thank you very much. Wait, oh, oh, what do you mean, thank you very much? This is my son here. What do you mean? How'd he do? <laughs> and they're like, uh, that's not how it works. But I didn't know. And so I said to myself, I can't have my son go through that. No way. I'm going to put my son through that. So I said no. They wanted him. They said no. So then Jim and Ed said to me, how about letting him do an episode? We got an episode for a little kid in a wheelchair, and he's brilliant at it. And he did that, and then he did another show the next year, and he's brilliant in that. I always think about him, too, because his first line when he, when he comes in, he's late. He comes in, he goes, the, city, the traffic in this city is incredible. Well, I say it every day here, you know. But uh, it was unbelievable to work with him. There's that, that, there's that wonderful moment where I'm, I'm down and I say to him, uh, Hey, listen, I, I, uh, the last thing I ever wanted to do was hurt some little kid. You know what I mean? I, I always wanted to be a fighter, but because, but not, because, not to hurt. Uh, can't you forgive me, you know? And then he punches me in the face, you know? 
And then he says, which is maybe my favorite line, he says, you knocked out my fighter. You know how hard it is to get a fighter to come to the hospital? We keep getting singers. <laughs> <laughs> but he was brilliant, you know, he was brilliant. And sometimes I think, geez, I shouldn't have stopped him, you know. But having said that, he's terrific and everybody's happy and I'll take it. You know, I'll take it. But working with your son is crazy because, you know, you don't, you, you, how do you, you worry that it, it reflects on you, obviously, you can't help that. That's just human nature. But you just want him to do so well. You, how do I help him? How do I push him over? Oh, don't do that. Oh, do that. You know what I mean? It was really, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But let me tell you, I look back at those episodes and watching it with my grandson, watching his father, he couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. It's, this was, again, we go back to that lucky thing again because not everybody has that.